Good evening, y'all. I was going to try to live stream this, but we'll do another live stream another day. I'm going to do a quick walk through the neighborhood, and we're going to see what we got out there that's collectible and edible tonight. We're not going to harvest anything tonight. I'm just going to show you guys my grocery store. You look over my shoulder there, you'll see the table of free plants that we will have outside all spring long and early summer, and again in the fall. Any plants that are found on that table are free. You can stop, pick them up, not even a thank you is needed. Hope y'all enjoy. Please leave the trays that they're on and the table alone, but all the cups and plants are all y'all's. Now, let's get started. I'm gonna flip the phone around and we're gonna see what we're looking at. Okay, let me turn back around. We're gonna start off down, going down this way a little bit. Give y'all a quick look at the table. Got a bunch of tomato plants, all different types. We've got some garlic. Looks like we have some bee balm still. We have some periwinkle here in the middle. We have some rattlesnake plant. A whole lot, excuse me, a whole lot of arugula. And some fresh early girl sucker cuttings they still haven't rooted yet but y'all are free to have alrighty let's start working our way down the street a little bit we're gonna cross right over the street here to my neighbor's ditch and just right up here I'll show you what I've been nibbling on as I've been working all spring ate that one that one was probably the sweetest one I've ever had and it wasn't that big oil thistle is delicious that one I didn't get to before it got cut down I was letting it grow a little bigger just kind of waited a day too long then we got some liar leaf sage right here take a couple leaves of that pinch it in my mouth as I'm working a little bit and look just a couple feet away Look at what we got here. We got some spider wart. It's amazing what you can find in just a few feet of each other if you know what you're looking for and somebody shows you what they are. Look at all the spider wart we got going on over here. See all that? It goes all the way down the ditch. But for those eagle eyes, there's even something else. Or there's something else here even better. We got mint. We got spearmint growing all over the place down here too. We got clover. And here, we've got Egyptian walking onions. And if y'all like onions, y'all are in for a very good surprise here in about one minute. Let's see. Anything else looking good? Look at all the mint down in the ditch. Here's another bull thistle. That one's a little on the small side to try to eat, so you either take the bulb to make a tea out of, or you let it go to seed. And around here, I've got very accommodating neighbors, and we let a lot of things go to seed. I come through and cut a lot down but we do let select ones grow. Now here's something that's kind of new to the neighborhood. We don't have very much red clover here, or crimson clover, but we do have some. I've got a couple chunks on my property that I transplanted. Here's another big beautiful bull thistle. That one's perfect eating size. I might end up chowing on that one tomorrow. Luckily I know all my neighbors in all these yards I've been here long enough to know what's been put in these yards over the last 20 years there's a nice little patch of red clover starting up right there I know where it's safe and not safe to eat out of these yards now for my onion lovers you look real close. 
the whole edge of this ditch is just lined all the way down all that nice fluffy green is all Egyptian walking onions all right this is just one property on the opposite side of the street from me look at all them onions they are just everywhere they taste so good I love to take the tops and pickle them make kind of like capers out of them all right let's walk down a little further There's another little thistle. And here on the corner, there's some nice curly dot. Now these ones up here on the corner of this street, we don't bother with. We let these go to seed. Nobody eats on these because there was a couple chemicals spilt here and some road work done in the last few years. But just a little further down the street, we're gonna cross over to the other side. There's a pretty. Huh. It's got a yellow flower on it. I'll have to figure that one out. For some reason, it's not popping into my head exactly which one that is. It's more than likely going to be a dewberry. But we will see. This is going to be a kind of long video, y'all. Oh, I love these little purple flowers. Uh, toad flax, if I'm not mistaken. Won't oh, come into focus. They're like little purple snapdragons. Alright, here we go. We'll keep on walking. I know I'm passing up a whole lot of stuff, but I don't want to... Uh, confuse myself or overburden everybody with too much information too fast. Because it is getting dark and for me to finish up this video, i got to keep moving. There are a few spots I want to try to hit. Now here's another type of thistle that we can eat. This is, I believe it's sow thistle. It's a lot thinner and a lot smaller, a lot more work in my opinion for a lot less return. Bull thistle's the way to go if you ask this country boy. Here's more of the toad flax. Can't help myself. I find them beautiful. All right, here we go. Sorry if I make anybody dizzy. I'm on the Louisiana road, so I'm trying to dodge potholes, look in the phone, and not fall in the ditch at the same time. Here's the spot that I collect a lot of my little water plants for my jarquariums. There's a whole bunch of different species here that come up at different times of the year. I can get different microbes here. It pretty much stays moist most of the year round. Only a couple times a year will it ever really dry up and it's still moist soil. Here's another pretty little purple. Call them little yard peas. Not quite sure exactly what they are the species wise. And they make little pea pods kind of cool I know the chickens love them all right keep on going now here's another nice thistle here this one's looking right about the perfect size for eating so that'll be on the list because this is in a good spot along with some more spider wart and a little bit smaller one we'll let that one go but right next to it we got another one looks like i got my midday snack figured out for tomorrow a little bit more lyre leaf sage hanging out back here if you haven't tried lyre leaf sage try it I love to dry the leaves and then add it to my uh, pot roasts. A lot of food that I like to cook in the one pot, I'll throw it in there with that. It's really delicious. 
and it's free. Sometimes it can be one of the most obnoxious plants in a garden because it will pop up in places you don't want it to. But luckily they don't have deep roots so they're not hard to remove. Okay. Now, we do have some dewberry plants here and some more lyre leaf sage. I used to collect dewberries here, but generally the city cuts down this corner with the brush hog and a weed eater right as the dewberries mature. All right, we're at another little intersection here. Believe it or not, we're still like a quarter block away from my house. We haven't gone very far, it just seems that way because I walk slow and I'm talking a lot. But look at all the lyre leaf sage out here. All them purple flowers. This is on the edge of the community garden. Here is our community garden right here. Still in the process of putting it in. But we will get it in. Even if it's one bed at a time. And I have to do it myself, which I know I don't. I've got people willing to help. We just got to come up with the money from the materials. Nothing's cheap right now because of all the COVID lockdowns, shutdowns. All right. Let's kind of just walk and look at the pretty layer leaf sage flowers as we get around this corner up here. I'm going to kind of speed up a little bit. And I think I'm going to stop talking a little bit because I don't want to run out of breath. I am a broke down old man after all. <laughs> Faster I walk and the more I talk, the out of, more out of breath I'm going to become. So once we reach this road right here where I'm headed, I'm going to be quiet and we're going to walk. Ooh. We got some berries coming up there. Definitely dewberries. Might have to come dig some of these up. We're still at the corner of the community garden. All right, going across. And I'm going to shut up and walk. Y'all enjoy the scenery and excuse the sound of me smoking a cigarette every once in a while. I run across anything important I'll make sure to let y'all know not quite sure what that is I'll check that out when I get home pick up trash again okay y'all I lied I'm gonna keep talking I'm sorry this is one of the spots I like to come and get my Similax my briar tips you can eat these little guys the tips on that that's a Smilax Simlax, however you want to pronounce it, the briar tips. And then as we go down, I'm sure I'll see one or two bigger ones I can show you. If it's not too dark. Because it is getting dark. I love about my particular road here that I'm on is depending on what I'm looking for it depends on what side of the road I'm looking if I'm looking for vegetables and herbs I look on this side if I'm looking for mushrooms I look on that side and half the time I look like a crazy idiot bouncing back and forth across the road 
every few feet to check both sides. But since I'm in a hurry, we're just going to walk down this side. There's not really a whole lot right here. This is a very good spot to find mushrooms. I don't know what you're looking for. After all these rains are over, I'll come out here with trash bags and I'll pick up all the trash out of the ditches that run down here. We don't really have anybody that does that back here on this part of the city. We're going to cross over because I believe there's other stuff over here besides just mushrooms this year. There's quite a few of the spider wart that made its way over across the street this year. Most of these plants are new. There was only a few here last year. Ooh. There's a liar leaf sage with a super light colored flowers. Almost white. That's pretty. This is just one of my herbal sections at my grocery store. Now granted, anything off of this road on the ditches we don't actually eat, but we can take home in pots, grow out for the seed, or take cuttings of. Now we do have a lot of wild carrot growing around here. That's going to be fun to play with later. One of the places that I collect my tadpoles and other amphibian eggs. Going right on up there in the four-wheeler trails and the deeper ruts that they make that dry out. I'll collect the eggs before the dry out happens. I give them as long as possible, but if it's inevitable that they're going to not be able to transform in time to get out before it dries up and dies, I bring them home and let them hatch out and let them go. I put them in ponds in the backyard and then they can disperse. We're just right here. It's not that far away. It's actually close enough that they'd be able to make it. It's within most of the animals' territories that live in this area. Here's another spot. Sometimes we get crawfish out of there and turtles. But I like walking on this side of the road more than the other because I love this ditch. The video is not going to do justice to the moss that's underneath all these weeds popping up right now. This truly is a beautiful ditch in the fall when most of these weeds are dead. That's good enough for over here. I'll cross back and go back up. All right, same road, just going back up the opposite side. Temperature just dropped quite a bit, and I'm a sleeveless shirt, and it's getting dark, so I'm gonna stay kind of close to the house. But the deer that live in this woods here, they'll come up to me when I'm in the woods sitting down. They're not afraid of me. And unfortunately, I've got to 
work on scaring them away because they are catty corner from the community garden and they will be our biggest threat once we get going and they find out there's food there they'll come and raid it every night so I've had to stop being so friendly to them this year I don't hurt them or anything don't get me wrong the most I'll do is clap my hands and startle them and get turtles out of here every once in a while this is always nasty, filthy water. And there's some really light, light blue spider wart. A little bit of white in there almost. Might come back and get that plant later. Pop that one up. This is a good way to find your variants. You go to a place that you know has a lot of one thing and walk around and look at them. Look for the ones that stick out that are the oddballs. It's just so sad to walk up on trash like this. I got people when I'm out here cleaning that'll actually try to hit me with their bottles as they drive by as I'm cleaning up the trash. We got some really good, decent people that live in my town, but we got some really scuzzy people too. But I guess that can be said for any town in America anymore. No place is safe. Uh-huh. I may have already got that one. Nope, look at here. There's the full size. Let's see if we can get it to focus. Focus on my hand. There we go. Full size Simlax, Smilax, Briar Tips. This one's about five foot tall, five and a half. I'm on a Grab about close to a foot and just snap. Comes off nice and crisp, good and fresh. And that's how you harvest that. I knew I'd find one or two out here. Wasn't looking too awful hard because I'm paying attention to too many different things at once. But that's all right. And this, y'all. I'm going to snack on this on the way home. And I see a bunch of them back there now that I'm looking. Appreciate y'all for hanging in this long. I know it's a long video. About a half hour is what I'm imagining it's going to be. And we got about another five to seven minutes before we're back to the house. But we're not going to take the same route we took coming up. This poor decayed log that you can barely see running lengthwise right there gave me probably 60 pounds of beautiful veiled oysters before it was completely done over a four year period. Didn't produce a lot, but it produced monsters every time it did. Always produced one giant and then one baby.
All right, here's a bunch more of the briars. I'm still eating that one. Hmm. I take my time. I like the flavor. And see, it's sad. People will just clean, pull over and clean out their damn car on the side of the road. Excuse my language. But that kind of stuff really makes me mad. Not just me that suffers, it's everybody. right there and we've got some deer mushrooms yeah fawn mushrooms deer mushrooms this is one of my other prime spots see a mushroom uh, one of the lumpy lumpy bracket relatives those particular type of mushrooms when I'm deep in the woods mushroom hunting I'll put one or two in my bag to keep my mushrooms fresher for some reason they don't rot as fast or get soggy as fast when you have a piece of one of them in there Unfortunately, we've got people putting trash way back in the woods. I caught the people that did that. They just didn't remove it and nobody would make them pick it up. We'll leave it at that. Okay, guys. We are at the end of my street. And my battery is about dead, so I'm going to say sayonara. It's 30 minute mark just about. I hope y'all have a blessed night. Garden on. Keep foraging. Good night. <laughs>